everyone, this is Charlie with HotTipsCentral.com and in this video we're going to transition you from the old Facebook to the new Facebook. Uh, we're going to give you a quick tour of the new features that are going to be going live on Friday, September 30th, 2011 and uh, kind of give you a quick tour on how to use these features. Maybe you can uh, use them in different ways, but either way we're going to just kind of show you where everything has moved so that you're not lost when you get there. Um, in front of me, and in front of you as well, you'll see the new, the old Facebook layout. This is what you have now, if you're watching this before September 30th. Um, and this is what you're used to. And you have the one tiny, you have one feed going down for a wall. You have uh, some friends on the left and pages that you like and everything on the left. You have these uh, directories here that you can navigate to to see certain information about a person. Uh, you have a profile picture, of course, a name details and data about yourself. You have five photos uh, on the top, which I've actually made the five photos uh, make hottipcentral.com. A lot of people are doing banners this way. Uh, and you'll see that this has actually influenced the new feature. I, I believe this is what influenced the new feature for Facebook in the new Facebook. And then on the right here, you'll have uh, buttons that you can use to subscribe and friends, messages, whatever, uh, and then ads. So that's the way the new Facebook, the old Facebook, I'm sorry, this is the way the old Facebook is structured. Now let's take a look, take a look at the new Facebook. It's right here. Lots of differences as you can see. Um, and one of the features why I said that the banners are being influenced, uh, I think this right here, being able to make a seamless banner has influenced a lot of, uh, has influenced the feature is because you can add a banner image up here now, a cover image. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I've already created a, uh, Photoshop document and I've made it into a picture of course and now I'm going to apply up here. I'm just going to move this where I want, right about there and save the changes. And this kind of gives you a really good way to utilize this space. Um, of course there's probably better ways but this is how I've chosen to utilize the space. I've, I've chosen to introduce myself as who I am and can maybe give a quote from someone I admire or someone I, I like to I guess look for, um, and uh, you know maybe advertise a few websites that I own too, and so that's kind of how I've chosen to use the space. You can use it however you want, but either way, if you just get into Photoshop and make a picture and upload it as your cover image, there you go. Pretty nice. Um, so let's take a look at how some of the things have moved, and I'm going to go ahead and slide this off to the side so that we can compare things side by side. First thing you'll notice is your profile picture is actually smaller now. Um, you'll have if I put these side by side, you'll clearly you can clearly see that these two photos here are not the same size. They're definitely different sizes, and it's because your profile image, uh, as it's being displayed on your profile, is now a thumbnail. Which mm, I mean, not quite a thumbnail. It's a little bit bigger than a thumbnail, obviously, because the thumbnail is down here. But the thumbnail image pretty much has the same dimensions as your image here, and so you have more uniformity throughout Facebook now because of that. The information here, which is normally up here about, about yourself, is now located underneath your photo rather than uh, beside it, which is not a big deal. Again, it's pretty good. And this part is really cool. These thumbnails here have actually replaced a lot of different things that was taking up a lot of space. And so Facebook looked and said, here's a column that's got a bunch of different things and a bunch of different people, and people aren't really utilizing these that much. They're not using them that much. This is kind of like wasted space. What can we do to change this? And they went, you know what? Let's take these and put them all up here at the top. And by doing that, they've actually opened up enough space so that your wall, which is here, can have two columns. And that two columns is going to be confusing, so we'll go into that uh, further in depth in, a ne in the next video so that you can kind of transition yourself into how to read the wall and how to use it uh, in different ways. But either way, um, here's where this part's going. Your friends are now located in this little one thumbnail here. And if you click it, you'll get a list of your friends. I'm not going to click it just because it'll bring up a list of my friends. Um, you can have your photos here. You can go ahead and click photos, and it will drop down a bunch of photos that you have and your albums that you have. And you can see, well, all your photos. That's pretty self-explanatory. And if you click to, I don't know, your likes, whatever, you can look at lists of things now directly from that uh, thumbnail. And these are actually customizable a little bit as well because if you go over here to this little section you can actually click this area here and it will drop down a list of your thumbnails basically and you can transition and move these anywhere you want. So if I want maps 
to be up where music is, which is where it is currently. Actually, that's, that's where it is by default. By default, you're going to have a layout that looks like this. Friends, photos, maps, likes. I didn't really care for maps to be there. I wanted my music to be there. And so I just clicked the little pencil, and I went down and I said, I want to swap positions with map. And boom, done. I would have rather it been like a click and drag thing, like a lot of things are on the, on the web now, but maybe that'll come in the future where you can just click and you know move them around. But that's how you have to do it right now. You click the pencil and you click swap with whatever. And so well, there you go. There's extra ones here, as you can see, and that's because we can have applications now. And applications like Spotify uh, can be utilized on your page and shared with your friends automatically in real time. And we'll go into that in the next video. And so that's kind of like a brief rundown of how your features have changed, how, how things have moved from the previous Facebook. Um, your advertisements and sponsors, ads or whatever, are now located down here as well. Um, but you'll see a lot of times they don't even show up. So, yeah, that's pretty good. I like, I, I like the fact that they don't really show up. But uh, other than that, we have updating info, which is here. You can view your activity, which is right here. Uh, so instead of your activity always being like, uh, say, we go down the wall here and it says, this isn't the case with me, right? I, it says I commented on somebody's status, right? That's not going to come on your wall anymore. You commenting on another person's status isn't going on this wall anymore, and that's amazing. I love that. Instead, it's going right here in View Activity. And you click View Activity, and all the activity you've done site-wide is then displayed there. It's not cluttering your wall, and it doesn't show everything to everyone else. So that's cool. Your activity, however, will still show up in this little ticker. So, you know, there's that. But the ticker, I like the ticker, but that's a, that's a whole other topic and it's off topic. But one last thing I'll go over, and this actually ties more to the next video, which is why I'm transitioning to it, is that this is a timeline structure. And so this uh, area over here, you'll notice to the right, actually has a lot of different dates. And you can click these dates and go back in time to these dates on your wall. So if I click uh, July, it will take me down to July and show me the things that happened in July. Really quick, you can relive the past in this way. If you go down by years, say 2010, then it'll start showing you major events that happened in 2010. It doesn't show you everything, but it does show you major things, mostly photo albums and parties you went to and stuff like that. So, so in the next video, we're going to discuss pretty much we're going to focus on the wall itself and how to read it and how to use it.